Queen Maria is having a baby in order to ensure the purity and legitimacy of the royal bloodline and to avoid the spectacle of the baby being switched. She had to give birth in full view of everyone. A heartbreaking roar pushed the tension to its peak and because the delivery room was surrounded by spectators, Maria is even hallucinating because the ear is so thin. Louis, her husband, held her hand and gave her encouragement after 10 hours of torture. Finally, there was a clear cry. The crowd rushed to check the sex of the baby. Only Louis noticed Marie, who was so tired that she fainted and immediately became nervous. Someone, someone do something! Louis didn't care about the sex of the baby at this moment. All he wanted was for Marie to wake up safely. Then the maid cut Marie's foot with scissors. The pain was so intense that Marie came to her senses. The first moment she woke up, she couldn't wait to take the baby into her arms. The couple welcomed a cute little princess. Onlookers cast disappointed glances. Marie felt the warmth of the baby in her arms and felt so happy. Even though everyone thought Marie was still not fulfilling her role as queen. But her parents thought that a little princess who could not inherit the throne was just as precious. Thank you. You have brought me great joy. However, Marie's mother, who was far away in Austria, was not happy to learn that Marie had given birth to a daughter. Marie disappointed her mother once again. Her mother then wrote Marie a letter. In her letter, she did not say anything about her joy at the new baby, only her demands on Marie. Her mother wanted Marie to give birth to an heir within eight years. Louis and Marie rode in a carriage to the baptism of the little princess. The people sent their congratulations, but as they watched the secret ceremony, Marie's thoughts were always affected by a letter from her mother. Her mother said that having a girl was like having a mouse. A girl would not make diplomatic relations between the two countries strong. She wanted Marie to fulfill her obligations to Austria. Marie, who had been married off at a young age, was not only living in Versailles amidst the intrigues and calculations of others. Even her mother was not a solid support for her. Her mother only used Marie as a tool for political alliances. In this situation, Marie lives under constant pressure, and for a moment of respite, she began to live a life of unrestrained luxury. She even set her eyes on other men. Queen Marie lifted her legs. She had to stay in this position for at least half an hour every day in order to give birth to the heir to the French throne. Under the pressure of the royal family and her mother to give birth to a son, Marie gradually became numb. The happiness of her marriage wore off. In its place, was a daily exercise routine to complete tasks. Bored at the palace, Marie threw herself into a life of luxury. At the New Year's Eve party, a familiar figure catches Marie's eye. Count Fersen had met Marie at a masquerade ball in Paris. Marie and Fersen had met before at a dinner party when Louis and Marie were in Paris. Marie and Fersen had met before. Marie was in the mood to be loved by the people of Paris. Fersen's admiring gaze passed through the crowd to meet Marie. In the crowded ballroom, the two of them played a game of hide and seek. But after a few moments, Marie lost track of Fersen. As she searched for him, Fersen suddenly appeared behind her and looked at her with affection. Marie reaches out and invites Fersen to dance with her. The moment of contact in the middle of the dance floor seems to have made Marie's heart ripple. Louis saw this scene and immediately became jealous and went forward to assert his sovereignty. May I? Of course. Fersen had to step back in good faith, but the way he looked at Marie already said everything. Louis thought Fersen was just a small episode between him and Marie. But now, years later, Marie and Fersen were reunited again. It was... Magical? The spark of love between them just keeps getting stronger and stronger. Marie even wrote to invite Fersen to her private party at Petty Trianon. Although Fersen could not refuse the Queen's invitation, Marie hoped that he would come for her as a person. Fersen did come, as promised, and so the two of them grow closer. Step by step, they fell in love. Louis was too busy to leave the palace because of his political affairs, as he declared his support for the American War of Independence. So France had to prepare for England, which might declare war at any time. Louis was so busy with the war that he didn't even have time to go to bed in his chambers. But he was still very concerned about Marie and the children. He sent them to settle in Petty Trianon at the first moment of the war. But the palace became a breeding ground for Marie and Fersen's love. While Louis was busy, Marie was enjoying her time with Fersen. It was the first time Marie felt truly free since she left Austria. Fersen, however, constantly reminded him that Marie was the Queen of France. Marie just wanted to forgive being queen. And then they kissed. He was a breath of fresh air among all the kings of France. He had never had a mistress in his life. He only loved Marie, the queen, 
and gave her unlimited love. After Marie gave birth to their first daughter, Louis even gave her petty Tryon and directly, he allowed Marie to enjoy uninterrupted family time here. But Marie's extravagant spending was not just about throwing parties. It even became her secret date spot with her lover person. Spoiled Marie is most sorry for Louis, who has always been loyal to her. Louis, who was busy with the war, still found time to spend with Marie and her daughter. However, he met Ferson by accident at Patty Tryon in this time. As an officers, Ferson was also very concerned about the development of the war. When Marie saw the two men talking together, she looked very flustered. She Saturday between them with a little embarrassment. When Ferson proposed the idea of joining the army, Marie could not hide her nervousness. The unnatural look between the two of them was also sensitively caught by Louis. Even though he was heartbroken, he didn't say anything to Marie. Louis hoped that his spoiled wife would come back to him. Louis' actions made them both feel ashamed of their mistake. Ferson feels that her husband is a good, kind and respectful man. Marie also realized that they should not have hurt Louis. They both did give each other irreplaceable feelings. But even if it was true love, it could only develop into a sinful relationship. Given all the preconditions, they thought of the good Louis, but finally chose to restrain their feelings and let the absurd relationship stop there. But Patty Tryanna's life has just returned to peace and quiet. Chartres finds Marie late one night with the news of victory in the war. Marie embraces Chartres with excitement to share the joy of victory. However, Chartres tries to kiss Marie. Marie was so frightened that she immediately pushed him away. It was only then that Marie realized the rumors about her and Chartres in the palace were not entirely false, but she had always considered Chartres only as a friend. At the moment, Chartres' feelings were a problem for her. So Marie, after hosting a banquet for Louis to celebrate his victory in the war, she denounced to Louis that Chartres had gone AWOL and returned to the palace during the war. But Chartres argued that he had deserted. I came back to announce the victory to the only person who mattered. Marie never thought the fire would reach her. Louis was incredulous, but he punished Chartres immediately and confiscated his rank. He expelled Chartres from Versailles overnight. Then he sent Ferson to join the army. Louis naively thought that by doing so, Marie would come back to him, but he completely underestimated the emotional bond between Marie and Ferson. Thank you, sire. I'm sorry to see you go, Count Ferson. After Ferson's departure, Marie had just returned to Versailles when she received the news of her mother's death. She finally broke down and cried out of grief. But only she knew where her pain was coming from at the moment. Marie gave birth to her first son, with Louis in her 11th year of marriage in France. After Marie had completed her duties as queen, Marie began to live a more profligate life. But what followed was an irreversible and tragic end to her life. 